eyes to every single story the passion and the glory just trying to make it through the day you know we're trying to come together arm in arm and hand in hand and with my brother i will fight to unify our land america home of the brave Stand strong when we're willing to change. And I will wash the feet of freedom and bow down on my knees, praying for a healing, fighting for the freedom of my brother and me. And on the other hand, there are those who would undo us, but really who would rule. And break us all apart And I will stand beside you And fight against injustice And lawless ones among us Come on, let freedom ring America Home of the brave We stand strong Guitars and tune them Melody and harmony Let's make a little revelry He pluribus unum Get your guitars and tune them Melody and harmony Let's make a little revelry He pluribus unum Get your guitars and tune them Melody and harmony Let's make a little revelry. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the John Morgan Show. Today, we're going to be talking about freedom. <laughs> Stay tuned. Hey, this is Al Robertson from Duck Dynasty and Duck Commander. I want to tell you about a great book called War on Fear from my good buddy, John Morgan. Of course, he looks like George W. Bush, who had the famous War on Terror, so I immediately knew, you know, there was a nice uh, a bit of wordplay there. This book is fantastic. I think it speaks to sort of that natural fear that all of us have whether it's public speaking or whether it's the first time you get asked to do something you've never done before, uh, up to, you know, the fear of, of loss of life, of, of a sick uh, person in your family, all the things that, that we face every single day. I recommend this highly. I promise you will be blessed when you read this book. And it's the sort of book that after you read it, you're going to want to pass that on to someone else, which to me are the best kind of books. So War on Fear, get yours as soon as you can. Good news instigator 
ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the John Morgan Show Humor, Passion, Perspective on all things that matter to the human race. What a blessing. Hey, I've got an idea. Why don't you share the broadcast at the beginning? Better yet, why not start a watch party? Hey, a lot of watch parties going on tonight. People getting ready to watch the presidential debate. How about inviting somebody to watch the vice presidential debate, free debate, or whatever we're going to call this thing. <laughs> oh yeah, this is going to be fun, folks. What a day. The last debate was fireworks, the likes of which I've never seen. Who knows what tonight will hold? Will it be that defender of freedom from Indiana, Governor, Vice President, Mike Pence from the great state of Indiana? Or will it be Kamala, 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 Kamala Harris to take the bacon. Who will take first prize? We shall see. And more importantly, how much of an impact will tonight's debate have on the presidential election coming up in 28 days? It's like a February. Oh, my goodness. It's getting to be so exciting and a little bit scary because greetings from Chattanooga. Diane Richmond, welcome to the John Morgan Show. I'm honored to have you with us as usual. Thank you so much for tuning in. Is, is it 4 o'clock there? 4 o'clock in Chattanooga, Tennessee? I know it's 4 o'clock in Nashville. Well, Welcome. Tonight is going to be interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I, I you know, my hope is that uh, Vice President Pence will be himself, that he will simply come out and be his, his friendly, truthful, uh, gregarious, funny, and honest self. It's going to be, oh, it's five. Okay, it's five in Chattanooga. Yeah, because you are east of Nashville in the eastern time zone. All right, cool. And Kamala, see, you know, I, I'm not a researcher. I'm a songwriter, okay? So I have to go by the same stuff that I hear that you hear. And maybe, you know, maybe I'll become a little bit more of a researcher as time goes by and the show goes on and I understand how much influence I peddle here on the John Morgan Show because the last thing I want to be in the whole wide world is someone who shares incorrect information. I don't want to be sharing incorrect information at all. I want to, I want to make sure that everything I share is something that's news you can use because it's true. Uh, but the thing is, I don't know how, how, I don't know how well you can trust uh, the fact checkers, because in some cases, that deck is stacked as well. So anyway, it's but research can be done, and you know if people say we have the documents, you can go and look up those documents independently. Like for example, Glenn Beck is one huge document guy. I mean he he gets his chalkboard out and he talks about this and that and that happened, and and then he says here's the documents and here's where you can go and see them. For yourself and so I you know I tend to trust him because he encourages everyone to do their own research and fact check him themselves um, but on the other hand as, as the joke goes 98.352 percent of uh, statistics are made up on the spot <laughs> but honestly I do tend to believe that there are those who would truly uh, use their power to rule over us. I know that there have been bills that have come up before the Supreme Court that had they passed, 
they would have severely limited free speech. I know that uh, presidential hopeful Joe Biden and his camp, including Kamala Harris, are wholeheartedly against school choice and will seek to end it if given the chance. And that would mean every, I don't, I don't think that means that there can't be private schools. I just m think that there can be no choice that involves government funding for private schools. So that's, we've been there in the past and we lived through it, but we don't want to be there in the future because we want people with limited income to have access to uh, charter schools, to any, any school that they uh, want to go to. That's, that's the beauty of freedom in America, that we don't have to send our children to uh, public schools if we don't want to. And so that's, that's good. Or, or we can send them across town. You know, we, in, in the uh, 60s and 70s, we had forced busing, and you had to go to the school that was in your, your district, and, and there was no choice about it. But now there is some choice, and they've got school voucher programs and things like that. That, that uh, really, what it does, one of the reasons that it's so effective is it creates a competitive environment that makes schools want to improve, want to do better, because they're being compared to other schools as they should be. Uh, because if, if, you know, if a, a uh, principal or if the dean or a school officials are just living, doing this, living the status quo, um, disinterested in really providing a quality education for their students, um, and they're lazy, then they can be held to account. And, uh, and also, if a school is unsafe, then uh, people have a choice to get a better place to educate their kids. And then we also have the fact that um, a lot of people in our biggest cities are graduating students with very low, uh, below par reading levels and math skills, just passing them through the system. And you know, our nation isn't made up of a bunch of ignorant people. We have uh, a nation filled with normal human beings that can learn, and if given the right environment, they can excel in areas of science, in, uh, in er every area of mathematics. I mean, we should be uh, graduating future, you know, uh, electricians, uh, uh, future engineers, future scientists, future missionaries, you name it. Uh, America should be focused on doing our best to give the very best education to these kids and not just babysitting them. You know, what, what, is, the, what is the philosophy behind dumb, the dumbing down of America? Why would, why would that be something that uh, our National Education Association would want to do? That's a question I'd like to know the answer to. And if anybody knows, feel free to put it in the chat box because, uh, you know, I, I don't want that. And so I'm all about gaining and maintaining our freedoms and uh, not losing our right to free speech. Um, I know that uh, there are those who may not be aware of this, but uh, our, our college campuses uh, have been a place where free speech is not tolerated. They, they actually have speech safe zones and and people can shut you down for saying your opinions and saying what you believe by by simply saying the fact what you're saying offends me and so that you know i mean if we if we limit our our speech based on things that are offensive <laughs> you might as well just zipper your lip and nobody speak your mind because thoughts have consequences when they're spoken and words have consequences. Uh, talk show host Rush Limbaugh, y'all remember him? Of course, he's still on the radio. Uh, pray for him, keep him in your prayers. He's um, fighting cancer. And he used to do this bit back when I first started listening to him. And uh, he would have the uh, update of the week. Now, Rush Limbaugh is a guy who, he definitely uh, is offensive. And he actually kind of enjoyed uh, tweaking the left. And, um, you know, whether that's a good thing or not, uh, 
you know, I, I don't I don't want to do that. I, I want to just be truthful and factual. And uh, I'm, I'm not one that likes to stick a needle in your eye or, or, or poke people with truth or, and be mean. I just don't like to. I'm not that way. But but he used to do this thing called an um, abortion update. He had a condom update and it would be uh, <laughs> the fifth dimension saying, would you like to fly in my beautiful balloon? You remember that? And then he had the uh, Senator Ed Kennedy uh, update and it, the car spins round and round and round and round. You know, it's just funny, entertaining stuff. But his abortion update was uh, interesting and he got a lot of flack for it. It would be the sound of a vacuum cleaner and a woman screaming. And, and he got so many complaints from people on the left because they, they thought that that was insensitive and hurtful. And, um, you know, eventually he, he actually quit doing it because he got so many complaints, probably death threats and everything else. But, but he used to make this point. He'd say, you know, I'm a guy on the radio playing sounds from a boombox, basically. I'm a guy on the radio just playing sounds, a vacuum cleaner and a screaming woman. And yet, the people that are complaining about those sounds actually do take the lives and support the life, the taking of the lives of living human babies. I mean, not no anesthesia, no putting them to sleep first, no humanity, no humane treatment, literally as, I mean, President Trump calls it, calls it like it is because it is, that's because that's what it is. Ripping them limb from limb. It's, it's barbaric, it's horrific, it's just unconscionable. And uh, I pray that uh, our, our country will grow a conscience, and, and it is growing a conscience. In fact, I am so excited because people are doing things like this in support of President Trump, the defender of freedom. It is amazing, this guy wrapped his truck. Uh, I came across this online, this picture, and uh, it's so exciting. I mean. You know why the president's rallies, uh, I'm, I, people wonder, people don't understand why people would literally risk their life to go to a Donald Trump rally. Um, and I mean, you know, since COVID, it was, it's, 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 it's deemed risky, uh, even though they're all held outdoors now. Um, but people have parades of all kinds. Look at this. I mean, the support, the enthusiasm, the excitement, the electricity, for Donald Trump is absolutely unmatched. You know, I used to get excited, giddy, in fact, at the thought of the election of Ronald Reagan. I remember those days. We, there was such a joy. I mean, do y'all remember 20 plus percent interest rates on your home mortgage loans? Oh my goodness, do you remember those days? Do you remember gas lines? Folks, because of our president, America is energy independent for the first time in our nation's 240 year history. We are energy independent. We are a net exporter of energy. I mean, happy days are here, friends, economically speaking. It's thrilling. And, and so you've got these people, they, they, rural, rural America, and see what the, the left wants to do. They want to do things like um, they, they, they don't care about the rule of law. I'm sorry, Mark, but they, they, have, they have done things like threaten. And, and these, are, these are your leaders, your, uh, the, the top guys, Chuck Schumer, packing the Supreme Court. In other words, we will do whatever it takes to stop this president. They don't respect the will of the people. If he wins re-election, they say they will they will change if they if they re withhold the power of the congress they will add numbers to the supreme court just so they can make it so they have a majority so they can get their stuff done no matter what the rule of law they just change the rules and uh pack the court and what's 
some of the other things they want to do. It's, uh, oh, they want to get rid of the Electoral College. Do you know what that means? That means that people in the cities that have the greatest amount of population would really make the decisions about who leads this country. The, the folks in uh, smaller rural countries, Wyoming, forget about you. You won't even count. You'll never see a presidential candidate because your vote will no longer count because it'll be the, the I mean, our framers, our founders were brilliant, brilliant when they first came up with the idea of the Electoral College. It was a way to divide the opinion of the country fairly among everyone. It's genius, and I love it. And we cannot allow the Electoral College to be done away with, right? We've got to retain it. God bless America. You know, I love that song. You know why? Because it's a prayer. And any time you sing it, address your Father in heaven. What you got? What? This is an e. Hang on. Karen's got a big, huge thing to say here. This is an easy forum for us to speak freely because most of us are like-minded. When you're in discussion with those of opposing views, views you get shut down and belittled. That is quite true. That's quite true. And that's why you got the John Morgan Show. And uh, they. They haven't discovered us yet, so let's just, you know, let's just keep it just us. Think about the words of this song. God bless America, land that I love. Would you stand beside her and would you guide her through the night with your light from above? from the mountains, to the valleys, to the oceans, to the white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America. May you send revival on this land. May we value our freedoms. Lord, I just simply pray that each party would be uncovered. I I have I have uh, people that I'm very close to, extremely close to, that say that Trump is not pro-life, that he's pretty much just playing us all. And his support for that, that theory is that Planned Parenthood got not $50 million as he, they did in the past years, they got $60 million this past year, plus an $80 million COVID relief payment, $80 million. And the, the argument was if Trump was truly against Planned Parenthood, I mean, he's Donald Trump, he would find a way. It would become on his front burner plate. And, and I said to them, look, I said, if, if, he's, if, if Trump, if this is all a big act, if it's all a big con, it's, it's the best con I've ever seen because everybody that I know that I trust is voting for him, that, that, that I trust from a religious perspective, from a pro-life perspective. And, uh, of course, you know, it, if he accomplishes little, that's better than those who want to uh, allow abortion right up to and even somewhat after the moment or during the moment of delivery. A partial birth abortion. The baby can be halfway born, maybe even already crying, and they can snuff out its life. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, I'm going with my gut, folks, and I recommend that you all go with your gut. Watch this debate tonight. Look as best you can into the soul and into the eyes of each of those candidates and search for purity. Search for truthfulness. Search for valor. Search for the the American ideals. 
that we grew up with in the 50s. Search for those ideals that made this nation great, that caused men to jump into military service, to fight against uh, fascist Germany, Japan in World War II, and gladly and willingly sacrifice their lives to protect this democracy. I would to this day, and I know you would too, God bless America, our home, sweet home. I am absolutely honored to share time with you guys on a, uh, all right, what are you guys talking about over there? I stopped donating to the United Way because they gave monetary assistance to Planned Parenthood. Yeah, Planned Parenthood. Wow. I highly recommend you guys uh, watch that movie, Unplanned. It'll give you a bird's eye view into the abortion uh, industry. And it'll help you understand from a firsthand perspective uh, what it's like to be on the inside and then have conviction hit your heart. And uh, I, I agree with uh, the, the, the young lady whose name escapes me at the moment that was, th that was the subject of that movie. And she says, until it's unthinkable, she will fight. And I couldn't agree more. May abortions be unthinkable. May we look back 10 years from now and say, how could we? How could we? Well, I, <laughs> abortion is just one of the things that I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about you. I'm passionate about your freedom. I'm passionate about friendship. I'm passionate about celebrating. I'm passionate about chili. I'm very passionate about spaghetti. And I'm passionate about music. And I'm passionate about my beautiful bride, Kathy, <laughs> who I threw under the bus yesterday. <laughs> I didn't really throw her under the bus. I was just making a little joke. Hey, I had been out at Dry Bar Comedy and uh, hung out with some great comedians, heard some really good humor, and uh, it was just hilarious. Uh, my uh, acquaintance, Jeff Allen, did a, a shtick on there, and he's going to be uh, performing live via Zoom in a, uh, at a uh, retirement home retirement, a huge, huge, uh, sprawling, beautiful, high-end retirement facility in Sarasota tomorrow, and I plan to uh, tune in and watch that. But you can watch um, Jeff yourself, Jeff Allen, on, uh, on YouTube, or go to download the Dry Bar Comedy app, and uh, you can watch Jeff Allen. And I love, I love his, his take on a communication between your wife. He says you have two choices. You can either be right or you can be happy <laughs> in conversations with your wife. Honey, and you know me, I love being happy. <laughs> and he says, he says, women never, and this is true, ladies, ask yourself. I mean, you expect your husbands to just know what you're thinking. Why, why, why wouldn't they? They're married to you. But ladies, let me tell you, we have no idea. We don't, we don't have the capacity to know what you're thinking. We don't. We weren't giving it. We, we were given other wonderful things, but not that. You have to just level with us. And he uses an example. He says, my wife will not ever ask me a direct question that lets me know what she wants. She won't tell me what she wants. He says, for example, if I leave my underwear in the middle of, the, of our bedroom floor, my, my wife won't just say, pick those up. Or would you pick those up? Would you put those in the hamper? Whatever. She, he says, she'll say, are those yours? <laughs> and he says, well, I hope so, because if they're not, I have a few questions for you. <laughs> Very funny. Anyway, dry bar comedy, check it out. Um, so that's it. What are we, 27 minutes in? That's good enough. Be excited. Watch the debate tonight. But be filled with joy and talk it up. Talk up our, our, our values. Talk up our president. 
and and let folks know how you feel and do your own research find out watch the Dinesh D'Souza movies and um, and then go and back up what he claims in those movies so that you can be uh, prepared to share with your neighbors uh, in a loving one-on-one -on -one conversation not mean-spirited at all um, just you know and maybe invite a neighbor over for tea and 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 uh, and just have ask them what they believe you know most most of my liberal friends don't really even know what their uh, candidates actually stand for what they actually want to do and when you uh, hold the candidates to their spoken words and share them with uh, your your friends a lot of them well that's not what they want and they can uh, they can be they can be uh, joyfully transferred over and there's a huge exodus I don't know if if you know this there's a lot of folks leaving the Democratic Party right now uh, because of all the violence that is being caused and, and, you know, and, and a lot of folks say, well, it's Trump's fault. Well, I'm pretty sure if you took a poll of the people that are out there causing the violence, you won't find a lot of Republicans being led by Trump, being cheered on by Donald Trump. You won't find that. You won't. You won't find it happening too, too often in cities run by Republican mayors. And if you do, it won't, be, it won't last long because it'll be put down because the police will be allowed to do their job. So, you know, and they say, hey, give us what we want and we'll stop rioting. Well, folks, that's appeasement. You know we can't do that. If you give a mouse a cookie, he's going to want a glass of milk. It's all about the acquisition of power, folks. And uh, we got it, and we got to keep it. God bless you. Have a great dinner. I love you. God bless the United States of America. case of red, white, and blue. Good night, everybody. God bless you, and God bless America. Hi, my name is John Maxwell, and I am with my friend John Morgan. And I have, on two different occasions, watched him do the George Bush impersonation. He's better than George W. himself. Funny, I enjoy him, and you will also. What I love about him is great values, great giftedness, and he will come into your life, into the life of your group, and give you humor, and give you food for thought that will truly make a difference in your life.